Next question is from Colton Marshall. What supplements should not be taken together? Oh, mm. I, I, I figured Sal would know this yeah, one. Yeah, uh, D ball and Cessanon probably. <laughs> so much. That's, that's, those are probably a little much yeah. together. Yeah, no. like, like, what magical formula is somebody you put out together there? Like, no, that's a great reaction. stack. That's actually. great. That yeah. puts on both sides. <laughs> you know what? Okay, so I know the question is like basically do they negate, like, what supplements negate each other's effects? Well, okay, I'll start with that. If you're taking an amino acid, specifically to, let's say, increase nitric oxide, right? Then you probably don't want to take it with protein or with a lot of amino acids because now it kind of loses its effect. So like if I take citrulline, for example, by itself pre-workout to boost nitric oxide, but I take it citrulline and protein powder, now I've got all these amino acids. A lot of them are competing and it's not going to produce uh, you know, those kind of effects. Wouldn't you say the same thing goes for if you're taking a protein powder and then a branch chain amino acid? W- waste the time unless your protein intake is low, in which case spiking branch chain, uh, branch chain amino acids makes sense. But yeah, I think generally speaking, branch chain amino acids are uh, a waste of money. Again, unless your protein intake is below that, that high amount. Uh, now, here's what you really should pay attention to. And this is, what I, this is the lesson that I've learned uh, probably a handful of times. What you don't want to do is combine supplements that augment each other because sometimes one plus one equals five. And what I mean by that is like if I combine caffeine and caffeine, like if I take 100 milligrams of caffeine, 100 milligrams of caffeine, then the effect I'm going to get is 200 milligrams of caffeine. That doesn't always work with stimulants. Sometimes you take 100 milligrams of caffeine and a little bit of ephedra or yohimbi or siniferin. And it's not like that. They amplify each other and you get this kind of dangerous runaway, you know, stimulant effect. So that would be the big thing I would say, pay attention to. Don't combine stimulants unless you really know what you're doing because the additive effects can be kind of nasty and a bit, uh, you know, dangerous. What about some of these supplements that are labeled as a fat burner and then a muscle builder? Oh, I hear what you're saying. Right. At the same Which time, is, I imagine or, or that's more a fat burner on a calorie surplus. Right. I, I just Im- I imagine that that's where this question is probably coming from. I, I doubt it's down to the uh, individual chemical level where you're going, and it's probably more generic. Like, could I take a muscle builder supplement and a fat loss supplement at the same time? That seems like right. a more common question that you would it, hear. Yeah. What's funny about that is that their muscle builder fat loss supplements do they compete with each other? Not really. Uh, but your diet and your training are what make the biggest difference. You take all the fat burners you want. You're in a calorie surplus. It's it's a complete uh, waste of time. You know, the thing that's really interesting- The same thing goes for a muscle builder. You could be taking all the muscle builder supplements you want, but if you're in a caloric deficit, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to build muscle. Totally. It's going to happen. You know what, know what, uh, what this makes me think of is, and this is the supplement industry is really good at this, is- and they still do this. There'll be like a, a supplement that's like for the pump or for muscle building or for libido or for sleep. And you'll turn around the label and it has everything you've ever read about that's supposed to help for that particular yeah. thing. And you'll look at it and be like, oh, this is for sleep. And then you'll be like, tryptophan, melatonin, theanine, GABA. And you're like, oh, this has everything. That yeah. means it must be more effective. What typically, what, What's typically happening there is that none of those things have efficacious doses. They just have a tiny bit of everything in there to get, or they'll have efficacious dose of one thing, like three milligrams of melatonin and everything else is like this tiny amount. Yeah. So, you know, what you want to do is you want to look at efficacious doses, uh, the right form. And then that's the thing you pay attention to, not just whether or not it's listed. Like I remember in the nineties, there was a supplement called hot stuff. And <laughs> it it was popular because because that niacin baby, probably loaded in it, and so that made you sweat your balls off. It, so you thought it was working hella it, good. It said yeah. on it, it had everything in it. Dude. I remember that. That was like super. That was like one of those yeah. hacks, right? They would they would load it up with niacin, and then everything else was pixie dust. And but you thought it worked because you're like, oh my like, god, my I'm skin's just, red. Yeah, I'm just I'm sitting sweating. here, and my armpits are sweating right now. I've yeah. even done anything. This stuff is really working. Yeah, well, the kicker with supplements pre workout, uh, the pre workout space figured this out. Is if we could put something in there, the person can feel, yeah. even if it doesn't do anything for the goal, as long as they could feel yeah. it, we're gonna sell a lot. So beta alanine, although there's some benefit, it makes your skin tingle, so that kind of makes yeah. you feel like it's I'm working. itchy. Something's working. By the way, you know they, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they borrowed that from other markets like toothpaste and shampoo. And oh, definitely shampoo. I mean, all those like dandruff commercials, like I the tingle, tingle, tingle. Let you know it's working. Yeah, yeah. or you know the the, the fact that you're you know what's crazy is up. I'm aware of that and it still works on me. 
Of course. Yeah. Like I still, I want my toothpaste to foam up. I want my head to feel tingly where I used to want my head to feel tingly <laughs> when I wash my hair. Not so yeah. much anymore. Wash but I, I, it's, even though I know that I know the science behind it, that that's all, that is all for them to make, just to make you feel like it's working and it's more effective. Yeah. But how crazy the psychology of that it's, I know it. And yet I still want it. Dude, I still would you want, want the lesson still works for me. You oh know, like, gosh. It's great. Would you want to use soap that didn't lather? Like what if it just like was slick right. and then you rinse your hands? Right, off? and that's a, that's another example. Which, by the way, when you do some of this like organic, all natural soap, you'll notice yeah. it doesn't lather up the same, and so you feel like you're like, God, I've been scrubbing my arm for like three minutes now. It's not lathering up. You know what's a good? I'll tell you what are good, good, interesting combinations. Uh, here's a good, a classic example. Theanine is an amino acid that's been shown to cause a calming effect in the body. Right? Caffeine is a stimulant. I love now, that together when you introduce that. Well, now you you think to yourself. Well, that would be counteracting. And, but what happens is the theanine actually reduces the negative effects of caffeine, but doesn't take away the energy producing effects. So what you get from it is this really smooth, you know, focus that just yeah. feels it's like really the good. high without L the less jitter. jittery. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You could do this with ashwagandha. Does that really well with caffeine where you get this nice, smooth energy. Some supplement companies seem to be jumping on this, kind of figuring this out. But yeah, you don't want to, again, when you stack supplements that all do the same thing, Sometimes you get more the negative and not more of the positive. So that's what I'd say. And the, and the, I think the biggest takeaway is the nutrition piece, right? Like, because most people that are probably asking this question, I think, go back to the fat loss muscle building thing. And the thing that's going to make the biggest difference on whether the it's the supplement is effective is actually where you're at calorically. Because if you're taking a supplement to build muscle, but you're constantly in a caloric deficit, you're not going to build any muscle. The same thing goes for what Justin was saying about the fat burning. If your goal is to take fat burner supplements, but you're eating in a 500 or do a thousand calorie surplus every day that supplement is going to burn any it's fat not doing anything yeah. you like the information in this clip you guys are going to love the information in this full episode make sure you subscribe and check it out